how you became a businessman. Education is important but not sufficient right. for success. Yeah. So my father moved to Dubai in 1975 from Mumbai. We were fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time and change the strategy of the business mm -hmm. to about 1,500 people today. What was the most unbelievable request that you received from a client? You see, in the desert, 14,000 people is easy. Uh, let's have a seat, guys, and ask several questions. We develop a business not to earn profit, but to serve something, right? All right? The money is secondary. Any business you do when you start, 100% concentration and the dedication is important by the default. I would recommend go and learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the funds, uh, I think the experience of learning something new uh, can teach you something for, for, for life. How to invest profitably? I said, no, you need to find your market first mm -hmm. and you develop your business model or your market. If you fail, uh, take it as a lesson. Energy comes from the passion. Yeah. That's what I would say. Energy comes from the passion. And in business also, you need to have some blessing, some success come from the God also. When, I, when you talk about a dream on a professional level, on a business level, is 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 what I've mentioned before is to get this comp this organization on a more much more globalized level. That's my biggest dream for the organization. UAE is the land of opportunities, a country where dreams come true. If you want to start a business and change your life, this is the best place to be. In this episode, we talk to the people who run millions turnover business and share their secrets of success. Whoever you are and whatever you do in life, you will definitely find something for yourself. Pure value, pure content, especially for you. Welcome to episode 3 of Game Changers. Hey everyone, welcome to the Game Changers YouTube channel. Today we are meeting one of the top Dubai SME CEOs. His name is Manish Hira and he is the founder of Hira Industries. Let's have a look and see what he has inside his office. Hey Manish, Hi, sorry to interrupt you. How's it going? How yeah. are you? Very well done. Okay, let's have a look at the desk. Actually, it's almost empty. Yeah. Uh, I can I can just predict that uh, Manish drinks lots of water That's to right. stay healthy. Uh, he has a calculator, of course, to <laughs> count all of this stuff. Two phones, definitely. Small notebook and a very large screen. <laughs> That's it. And the phone. Tell us a little bit about the awards. What are these awards for? So some are going back from 2005 when we were, when we were just uh, starting up, when we were just uh, uh, having, some are, some are from very old relationships in right. place from like 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. These are just some accomplishments. Yeah. So some are where I'm part of two basically business platforms. One is an entrepreneur organization, mm -hmm. which is uh, a great platform for any entrepreneur to be in um, to share experiences. Um, with like-minded entrepreneurs. Right. So the entrepreneur organization is a global chapter and in UAE they have about 90 members. Ah, okay. Recently I'm also part of another uh, business platform called uh, the Young Presidents Organization, which is the YPO. Mm -hmm. um, so these are basically um, memories of when I've served on the board mm -hmm. of, these, of these business platforms um, and, um, and, and my journey through these sort of business platforms. Nice. Right. Look, I, I feel really, I feel really <laughs> short <laughs> and standing <laughs> to me. Uh, what is your, you are almost... I'm 6'4". Six, four. Ah, 6'4". Six, four. Yeah. So, uh, your favorite, uh, sports was basketball. Basketball. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but what I'll show you is actually some of the history, so this could be interesting here. Wow. We have lots of photos here. Yep. What are these photos about? So this is a collage of a little bit of a history of the organization. Right. Uh, the founder who, of the business who was my father, 19, uh, who founded the business in 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the memories of the uh, history of the business life that we've had. Uh, so back in the days when uh, he's founded the company, it was, you know, 
he was a he was a first generation entrepreneur. Right. He's the one who founded the business. Yeah. Um, so some of the memories of how the business grew, at what stage mm -hmm. the businesses were in. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, business was you know uh, all about uh, people, about uh, you know uh, what we did at the trade shows, uh, who we interacted with. Uh, how we, me and my brother, were exposed into the business at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, how we always saw, uh, being a being an entrepreneurial family, you yeah. obviously have a lot more talk on the dinner table and within the family about business in general. Um, so it is definitely just a little bit of a collage of the history of the organization. Right. Uh, how we grew from a very small organization back this in Sharjah. This is Charger. how it all started. So That's you right. started from Sharjah, yeah? That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And uh, that down there is my father yeah. uh, with one of the one of the delivery vans that we had back in those days. So in this particular area, in this office, this is our central logistics office. Uh, right. All of the manufacturing is done in Rasul Kema, yeah. and that's where all the factories are. Uh, this is the central office where you have uh, sales, accounting, uh, primarily sales and accounting. Okay. Uh, so majority of the people you see over here are all engaged in uh, sales activity here in this part of the section. So this is sales, and this is also sales. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is more technical sales yeah. and this is more commercial sales. How many people do, do we have here in this area? So in this area, there'll be about uh, 100 people here. Wow. Yeah, I mean here and downstairs in this in this venue, in this location. And how many sales do we have, salespeople? 70, um, 60? No, in, in the UAE or in the bar? Uh, in the UAE. In the UAE, there'll be about uh, 120. Wow. Yeah. So I wasn't sure what you guys really wanted to see today. Yeah, and we don't really have too much camera work in the factory, so... <coughs> Hi, how are you? Hello. Wow. So here is basically where we stock and uh, we stock most of our products that, we, that are manufactured by us and then they're distributed around the, so around the UAE. everything that we see here is produced by you? Yes, everything. How many countries are you currently working with? So we have uh, actually our own sales offices in about 26 countries at the moment. 26 countries? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, 12 factories, predominantly in Dubai, now in India, uh, soon upcoming in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, US as well. Um, and then we export to over you know, 55 countries worldwide. Uh, proud to have made in UAE product grown all over the world. Um, in Europe, in US, right now, all of our products are manufactured here mm -hmm. and uh, exported all over the world. All right, guys, so now is my favorite part, the giveaway. If you would like to get one of these wonderful caps, you need to subscribe to our channel, to activate the bell, and to write in the comments below the six major products that Hira Industries produce, manufactures. And Manish himself will be selecting the winner. Get the number one step-by-step -step guide on how to become your own boss in the UAE. You will learn how to start your own business in the UAE. Just click the link in the description below this video and follow this link. This is your time to start. Click the link below this video. Bam. Hi, welcome to the Game Changers YouTube channel. Today we're in one of the top companies of Dubai, which is called Tour Dubai. We are meeting the managing director of the company, the founder who managed to build a successful business. So if your reception allow us to go to managing director, we are ready. Yeah, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> so actually, it's a very interesting person. We are meeting him for the first time. And what is very interesting is that he has a very nice story to share. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Hello Mr. Anu, how are you? How are you, Maxime? Long time, nice long time. <laughs> yeah, we how were you, we you? were really struggling to yeah. find the place and uh, have a very interesting topic for discussion. Okay. And we are ready yeah, no to go. Yeah. So, Mr. Anu, yeah. can you please introduce yourself, what you are doing, 
and what is your business all about? Okay, that's a good question. Actually, the company name is Tour Dubai. Right. Company started in 1989. Yeah, I read that it is one of the like all the all the sense like the very very early startups of Dubai. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we started with the uh, uh, cruise operations. Right. In the creek uh -huh. with the yacht. Yeah. Then we find out that uh, yacht is available because a lot of Europeans are coming in and then the yacht is available in all, all, all over Europe. Right. We tried to switch into the traditional boats. Okay. Then we grew from there. We started one traditional boat and then uh, now we have eight traditional boats. Eight boats. In different part of UAE. All right. So, and then uh, we have a beautiful desert camp. Yeah. We have uh, buses to do the daytime tours. Right. So, what makes him the vision of the company is yeah. um, sea based or water based tourism. Yeah. Land based tourism. Yeah. Desert based tourism. Right. Coming back to the roots. Yeah. Can you please tell me? Uh, your story, how you became a businessman, because for some people to become a businessman, it's really tough, it's hard. Yeah. And I imagine a young entrepreneur who, who came to Dubai and decided to start. Can you uh, please tell us not, a little bit about that? It, yeah, yeah, I will definitely share with you. It's an interesting story. I met my mentor, Mr. Russell Knott, he's a British national. Right. He's an illustrator. So if you see RTA map, Mm -hmm. It's done by him. Ah, right. If you yeah. see London yeah. map, it's yeah. London, uh, uh, drawn by him. Rome, mm -hmm. map of Rome. Mm -hmm. So he's an illustrator. Yeah. His industry is more on illustration than the cruising or anything. Mm -hmm. So I met him in 1999. Okay. And uh, I joined him because I liked the product. And when you when you met him, did you have did you have already any experience in business or no. did you work for someone? I was working in the hotel industry as uh, as who the, the front office manager. Really, yeah. I was also when I started, I came to work at the reception uh, also to the hotel. Oh, okay, so, so I, the yeah. same thing. Yeah, I was in the front office. Right. I worked in uh, Marriott. Right. I worked in Sheraton. I worked in Kambinsky. So you are self-made. Oh, uh, you can say yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. When, uh, because I felt it similar with the boats and, uh, you know, the product is uh, mm -hmm. uh, servicing the tourist right. or servicing the hospitality, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. except the boarding. We don't offer boarding on the boat. Yeah. So that's an interesting story start. Yes. Then I actually I started as a operation director with uh, Russ. Then, as I told you, he has, um, uh, what do you call, he is more passionate about drawing. Mm -hmm. He gave me an op option to lease to buy his boats. Right. Okay. So, how old were you when you started this business? Uh -huh, that is 99, so 20 years back. And it was, it was your 30s, 40s? 30s. 30s. I'm 50 now. Okay, and yeah. do you think it was too early or too late from your perspective? No, that, you time, that time was the right time. I the would right say. time. Because, see, to start, uh, okay, nowadays any entrepreneur can be on any age. There's no yeah. age uh, barrier on any right, entrepreneur. Right. Yeah. But this um, uh, 30 years of age was right for me, mm -hmm. and uh, Dubai was growing yes. in the uh, right time. Yeah. Uh, the, cut the story short, within two years, I become the owner of the company. Wow. Because I leased the boat to buy. Yeah. That option he, which he gave me. Yeah. Become, I, I started buying the boat from him. So we had two boats or he had two boats by that time. Right. So within two, the contract was for five years, but yeah. I finished the contract in two years time.
Hello everyone, today we are here with Alexander Williams, one of the best visionaries of United Arab Emirates. I come from Singapore and I'm of mixed uh, Chinese Indian parentage. So I've got the best of both worlds, the Chinese world and the Indian world. Um, born in 1965, um, I worked in Singapore for many years. I came to Dubai 10 years ago and at the early age of uh, my early 40s. Okay. And it was a uh, chance that I could not refuse. Mm -hmm. I was headhunted to help uh, Dubai develop the small and medium enterprise policies. And I thought, you know, um, it was a great, great chance for me to uh, share my expertise okay. and develop the talent uh, for this new role in, in this organization. And, uh, and, this, and as they say, the, the rest is history. Yeah. So for the last 10 years, it's been a beautiful, wonderful journey. Mm -hmm. uh, it, had, it had 10 more years of my work experience of almost 28 years uh, of working. And I told myself that because uh, the uh, rewards are very good, uh, as in the non-financial rewards are very mm -hmm. good, makes me happy and I'm very comfortable uh, doing what I do for the next 10, 20 years for as long as I can contribute. Yeah. That's my mentor, my, 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 my vision in the, for the next 10, 20 years. Now you are shaping, like I've been to several of the seminars and conferences where you were not just a speaker, but one of the most important people in general in the, that influenced the conference at all. So how did you manage to come to that point? Where did all your stories start from? Well, as you say, um, uh, when you age and you mature, you discover certain strengths that you have and certain weaknesses. Yeah. So my strength was in the ability to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, I, I dabble into the details because details matter to me. So as I uh, went through my life, my career and my life, I realized that um, as I grew older, I was good at uh, advising mm -hmm. and uh, giving guidance to others. And also at the same time, I was also good at receiving and guidance from others and listening to others. I think that's very important because you have to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the point that now I get uh, a lot of uh, requests to shape uh, conference agendas, themes, conversations, um, to, to create that spark, forums, and uh, structure conversations and discussions. So I've reached that stage where I'm able to see what really works and what would really excite the audience with regards to conversations uh, in the space of SME development, policy development and mm -hmm. the future of uh, future economy of uh, yeah. Dubai. What do you think? How will business transform in future? I agree with most of the textbooks or conventional wisdom that says that every company now must be a data company mm -hmm. or a technology company, uh, but it depends on where you want to hit the right spot mm -hmm. and that spot changes every time. So uh, I would say, I would not like to tell a businessman what business you like should go into. It yeah. should be your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be your passion. There's no crowded space. It's how you make a difference of that space right. in that market. It's how you execute that business. Mm -hmm. It's how you make sense of your passion and you connect with the customer. That makes a difference. So you can be selling jewelry to clothes to a service. It's all the same how you reflect and you uh, make your customer mm -hmm. the central point of your business. I think once you have that, chances that you will succeed. Do you think you need an education to start business? It depends. Um, for me, um, there are a lot of successful businessmen without education. Mm -hmm. I can, I mean, I know a lot of examples in Singapore, the past generation who, who had basic education, I would say no education, were able to be street smart, Mm -hmm. and learn on the ropes and learn the hard way to, to develop their business instincts. Mm -hmm. If you're a, if you are starting a professional business, for example, if you want to start an accounting business right. or architectural business, definitely you need to have a basic education in a f finance accounting. Right. You need, if you want to start up a big legal firm, okay. you need to have a legal background, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So there are certain businesses that depends on, on the profession that you are. but. A vast majority of businessmen I know 
uh, when it's when because they are so successful, it's only after they are successful then they went to MBA school. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, them, you know. They decided that uh, they have a story to tell. They want to go to MBA school to just affirm the knowledge that they have done in the last ten years in setting up business yeah. is is right and to network. So the conclusion is that it depends on uh, on the, the the type of business that the, mm -hmm. that this individual is trying to develop. But I would say that a vast majority of successful businessmen did not have a formal education mm -hmm. and they are doing so well now. It tells you that education is important but not sufficient right. for success. Yeah. So my father moved to Dubai in 1975 from Mumbai and uh, he was here uh, working with Al Fateh mm -hmm. as an engineer in the HVAC field. Um, he had by then taken between 75 to 80, which was his journey in Dubai um, when he was working with other companies. So between 75, he came with Alpha Thame. Then he had another opportunity with another HVAC company, which he helped start that HVAC company. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking around him, I think he realized that in 1980, uh, that there was a, a great opportunity over here in this country to start your own business. You started being involved into business from the age of five? Well, you had the exposure, right? Yeah. You had the exposure, you started understanding that, listen, your father is, uh, uh, is involved in, in entrepreneurship, right. in managing his business. So you started understanding that from a young age. Our story of success actually came with, obviously, UAE. I think uh, being at the right place at the right time, I came into business in 99, um, struggling business in 99, and then sort of had this opportunity in the construction boom that they had over here in 2002, all the way up to 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, that construction boom sort of fueled our entire business model. Right. Uh, it helped us accelerate our manufacturing facilities. It helped us grow our business over here that funded the business regionally. Mm -hmm. So we became from a UAE business then to a regional business in the Middle East where we had offices then in Saudi and Qatar and Oman. When I graduated, I did have the option to stick around back in the U.S. and come back here okay. um, to uh, back into the business or stick around in the U.S. and work over there. So the reason I chose to come back, and this was no pressure from my, from my dad because he was like, you can do what you want, mm -hmm. is that I, I realized that the business was in a, in a struggle. Right. So you had a system where you are a family business where your family has supported you mm -hmm. all your life until you graduated. Right. And now you see the business in trouble. Yeah. So what do you really do? Do you stick around in the US and avoid the business and try to make your own life? Or do you come mm -hmm. back and try to save the business? Yeah. So I decided to try to at least try and help my father to save the business. Right. Um, so for me, it was a bit of a, uh, it wasn't a conversation of a choice. Mm -hmm. It was a decision that I think that had to be done. I would recommend go and learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the funds, uh, I think the experience of learning something new uh, can teach you something for, for, for life. Yeah. So if you have that kind of money rather than putting it in, I don't know, cryptocurrencies or whatever else uh, mm -hmm. is hot or trendy at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, I personally would, would go and, and try to fulfill a learning gap that I have. We want to clarify one thing that uh, when Manish started and took over the business, it was a negative stage. Uh, the business was struggling. And from 14 employees? Yeah, so when I joined the business, we were, like I mentioned, just to give you a little bit of a history, we were yeah. uh, a distribution company uh, focusing on distributing HVAC products. And um, we were about 14 people. Four, and one, four, 14 people. Yeah. And from so, 14 people. So from 14 people, we're, we're in 2018, uh, joined the business in 99. We were fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time and change the strategy of the business mm -hmm. to about 1500 people today. The thing is that when, when you, you don't really take over the business, when you come and join a family business, it's more about doing a bit of everything when you're, when you're that size of a business. Mm -hmm. When you're that size of a business, you are the accountant, you are the salesperson, you are the IT, you are everything. Hello to small entrepreneurs. Yes, <laughs> you, you, do, you do everything. Yeah. You're depositing checks in the bank, you're managing the sales, you're uh, running around uh, uh, purchasing computers for your, for your office. That's right. You're, you, you're the guy, you're doing everything. Yes. Um, 
And I think that is important. I think mm -hmm. that's important because you get a taste of every single part of the business that's required. Mm -hmm. You're collecting money, you're, you're selling, yeah. you're, uh, you're kind of making service, sense of it. Yeah, yeah you're, you're kind of making sense of everything and surviving. The most yeah. important is your surviving. What do you love about the UAE? Um, I think it's um, I think it's a great country. It's one of the safest places uh, to live in. Uh, I think a lot of people definitely love to 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 live in the UAE. For us in Dubai, particularly, uh, I'm born here, so for me this is this is home. And um, and the opportunities that it has created and keeps creating. Uh, suppose you met His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. What would you tell him? Did you have a chance to meet him, by the way? No, unfortunately, uh, till date, uh, people do see him around. People yeah. do have a chance to meet him, and unfortunately, I have not uh, uh, met him so far. Uh, if I do obviously get the opportunity to meet him, uh, I would just love to thank him. I would say thank you for having the vision to create uh, one of the best cities in the world um, for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I'm not mistaken, your name, Hira, yeah. is a part of your last name. Is that correct? That's Why you, correct. did you decide to, to, to have this name, Hira Industries? So this uh, will go beyond me. So because uh, the, the the business was founded by my father, right. uh, and hence he had uh, incorporated the family name as the business name, which is pretty common, I think, for a lot of uh, family businesses. Uh, let's go there. Sure. To, to check your different certificate. I, I I will just tell our viewers that one of them is about college and business oh, administration. Yeah. Uh, one is from Harvard Business School, and this is the rank number two from 2013 yeah. from Dubai SMEs. Uh, many people, they uh, say that, especially like big people, they say that you need to have business education. Some people say that you don't need any business education, just go for it and you can, and you can succeed. Sure. Uh, you studied in one of the best world business schools. Harvard, Harvard Business School. Yeah. From and you have a very big experience. Can you share your thoughts whether you need it or not? Sure. Uh, uh, this is question number one. And question number two, maybe at some point you need this education. And what is this point about? Sure. So I graduated from Northeastern University in Boston, and then I did some executive courses in in Harvard, which I keep doing time to time. Yeah. Um, I I think for for business, and if you want to get into entrepreneurship, you don't necessarily have you don't necessarily have to go to business school in order to be an entrepreneur. Right. Um, I mean, I know many doctors who've converted into entrepreneurship and they've done very well. Um, so it's not necessarily that you must go to business school to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or be a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do decide that you do want to take up entrepreneurship, then I think it is a good idea to refresh your skills, um, go and learn on the tools that you're going to need to manage this entrepreneurship journey right and and that perspective you need to you need to learn do you usually make your own research or you rely on the data of some other consultants or companies How i think it's a combination mm -hmm. so we do make our own research and that could be uh, obviously not 100 percent accurate mm -hmm. and hence you have to depend on many resources for the research local your own mm -hmm. uh, and try to make it make sense of it all so mm -hmm. for instance we do that all over we know the market size in the us for our products in europe in southeast asia and then we see how much we can sort of attain of that market share have we put in the right resources to attain those market share did you ever think of starting your own company um, well, actually, I mean, this is starting my own company. Literally, when I came in 99, although it's a family business, uh, the model of the business was very different. Mm -hmm. So it was like starting a company from scratch within a company. And we're doing this all the time anyway. Uh, when we're going to new countries, we're literally starting an organization from ground zero, right. a complete greenfield organization. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually creating new companies within our company all the time. Every company. Uh, new products, <laughs> yeah. new manufacturing setups, which we've never done before. Right. Um, and, and those businesses are, are, are very, very flat and new. So uh, it is, it is, you do get the exciting, uh, you, do, you do get that opportunity within the business itself. Do you remember when you were buying your first boat? 
Mm-hmm. Was it scary to buy? Uh, as I told you, it was a lease to buy option. Yeah. So I didn't uh, need to buy the full money. Yeah. But what I had little saving, and mm-hmm. then I was giving my mentor, Mr. That's not a huge check. Yeah. My wife, my everybody said it's like a suicidal, because you know it's a commitment, right? Correct. Don't scare up with your commitment. What you need is commitment to bring the number. Yeah. What was the most unbelievable request that you received from a client? Yeah, that is. I in fact I did the unbelievable request. I even accomplished this also. Yeah. Fourteen thousand people in nine days. Fourteen thousand people dinner on the boat. Fourteen thousand people dinner on the boat in two thousand fourteen. This is the biggest group came from China. Wow. Called New Skin. It's bought by the Danata. It's the Emirates Airlines group. Mm-hmm. When we got the group, we were just thinking. Two days was thinking how to answer that email. Right. Okay. It's it's unbelievable. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a stadium. You know? Yeah. It's a stadium of people. And you see, in the desert, fourteen thousand people is easy. Yeah. You know, desert. You can keep on extending. Correct. Boat means like aircraft. Yeah. You have hundred people capacity. You cannot put one more person. Yeah, forget it. But that average boat versus so much number, we were like baffled. How we will do it? But we did it in nine days. Right. In nine days, back to back, back to back, in every day. So. Mm, so how many cruises do, did you have? Nineteen boats. Nineteen boats per every day. day. Any business you do um, uh, when you start, I mean, I said mentioned to you 100% concentration and the dedication is important by the default and even if you find the success mm-hmm. be on your shoes mm-hmm. don't jump up and down yeah. no need to do you think every person can be a businessman entrepreneur or it's not for everyone i don't think it's not for everyone you know some people you need to really put really hard effort Mm-hmm. to bring in some people i see that they they want to work like eight hours and okay this is my time if you have that approach you can't be a sales uh, you, you, you never become a successful no, person right? no you can't be a businessman yeah we are going to see the operations the center of the control of the business. Let's go and have a meet the head of operations. Hello, Hello. How, are how are you? Hi, welcome, nice welcome. to meet Hi, you. Nice to, to meet you. To Dubai. How are you? Very nice. We are very excited to be here actually Thank to you. see Thank how you. it is structured, how you work, how you Excellent. manage to reach such amazing level of success. Excellent. So you are the number one person who is controlling all the operations. Yes. Uh, can we ask you some questions? Sadly, yeah, uh, let's have a seat, guys, and ask several questions. Okay, please, have a seat. Thank you. Obviously, you have a very amazing uh, office. We see yes. lots of items. We will yes. definitely ask all these items. We have a coin stain stage here, so definitely we will ask. But first, several questions about management. Oh, okay. yes. All right. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, how did you become the number one person i'm in great passion for customer service so in, when i joined uh, tourism i first worked in hospitality mm-hmm. so i worked in the world we call it a seven star hotel it's a five star hotel it's a Burj yeah. arab hotel i yeah. worked there for 20 years right in the concierge mm-hmm. so in these interactions i welcome visitors to the country to dubai and show them around dubai and tourism and in that field, uh, that inspired me more into go into operationals. Yeah. So then, as Tour Dubai was a leading company in, uh, in Dubai yeah. in, in, from 1989, right. they're the first uh, DAO operators mm-hmm. in the creek. Yeah. The traditional, the lifeline of Dubai. Yeah. So it's an ancient way, pathway for traders to come into Dubai. So Correct. that's how Dubai was known around the world. Right. So I wanted to be, because I work in number one hotel, I want to be number one company. 
Yeah. So I joined uh, Tour Dubai to be as number one operations person. How did you come to Dubai in general? Well, you said you started working in the hotel. Yes. Did you start working in the hotel from the very beginning or before that you, you had some Yes. Uh, I, in the beginning, I when I was doing my college, yeah. So there was a break period. So I used to go to small jobs. So I joined in a marketing company. Right. So I was a marketing background. Okay. So then I joined in the hotel as yeah. an apprentice. Yeah. So then I went as a telephone operator. Yeah. And then I moved on the chain to a front office assistant. Right. Went to front office. Mm -hmm. And then I, I found a word called concierge. Yes. So that inspired me and then I could interact with more guests and get them feelings, make itineraries for them. Yeah. This is our operation area. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, where we, this is a, like a, like a, we call it as a war room. Yeah. So we discuss, do act, plan, everything. Yeah. Uh, so when we walk here, we see uh, my colleague here, his name is Mohamed, he's operation manager for the Sahara Hi, uh, Resort. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. How is, it, how is it going so far? Everything, Everything is, is under control. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Great, Everything. great. And uh, we have our operation team here, he's a MICE person. Yeah. He's looking, his name is Sudesh. Hello. Uh, Sudesh, nice to meet you. Hello. And then we have a discussion there, Shini, she's there. Hello, Shini. <laughs> and then we have our DAO operation, Mr. Jo uh, John. John, hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And these are our managers on, uh, on the DAOs. And now we are going to marketing manager, the person who is responsible for all marketing in the company. Let's ask him secret questions. Hello. Hello, hi. How are you? I'm good. Maxim? Nice to meet nice you. Meeting. So you are in charge of all the marketing things yes. that are happening in the company, right? Can we ask you several questions sure, about please. the marketing? Yeah. Um, we live in the digital era. Everybody is online, on the tablets, on the phones, on smartphones, on the computers. How to be number one in this market game? Tour Dubai is going to launch on the B2B platform there. An agent can book, no need to send an email, just mm -hmm. open the portal. Yeah. They can see the tools, what they need, and the agents can book online. Yeah. And for the guest, we have the new platform of the B2C. It's a worldwide we are doing. We are doing the marketing for that as well. Wow. Where we can, the guest can go in, click the tool, which day they want, select it, book online, and the payment will come, the tour is confirmed. And we do a whole thing with the help of a company based in London is yeah. going to do our digital marketing as well. Right. What would be the number one advice to all the subscribers and viewers who want to promote their business online? To promote the business online, you have to be very consistently checking your uh, marketing. Don't spend money much where you are getting uh, the frauds people out there. They'll say that they'll do like this. No. Try to concentrate on what your products and try to market on the way how it can reach to the correct consumers. We are all living in digital economy. So digital is everything. It comes and goes. The new trends are coming, chatbots, funnels and etc. Coming and going and you need to be ahead of the game. What would be your three most important pieces of advice for this young entrepreneurs who are watching us now here. You should not copy the other products and try to replicate it. Because already you, if you have a good product with you, it is easy to sell through the consumers. Now you have different channels where uh, for the sales you can do it. Either you can through, go through your own uh, website or you can now soup is an example of an open platform to sell it or like an online for the tourism company, we have Viator Get Your Guide. So we are into that. Second, the pricing structure. You have to always con uh, concentrate on the pricing structure where you have a uh, family, it should not be much based on your standards and quality. You should maintain your pricing structure. And three, the marketing environment. You have to see the correct way of marketing that you can sell your products continuously to your end consumers rather than making an, a middleman to add his portion of uh, profit or 
the money or the fees and making the end customers buy it so let's say selling a product right now is not so easy but if you have the right product and the right marketing you'll get a very good uh, consumers or the customers see in operations you have to look at two things for me mainly is dedication mm -hmm. one person the other one is where you need to live and learn every day mm -hmm. so operation is a daily live activity yeah it is not a dead operations yeah. so in that one you need to be on a constant move yeah so you need to study the resources of yesterday like the information what i got yesterday that i, I can put it input for today yeah. like if i'm running the operation of dows and safaris and tours and uh, excursions in this company is time management yeah so this book is a beautiful uh, way to understand how to keep a team mm -hmm. as a team and what is supposed to not to go wrong with the team right next to the table we have a small aquarium <laughs> with one fish <laughs> uh, do you have the name for it uh, this is a fighter fish we call it as no yeah, yeah. so this one is uh, we usually i call it a sweetie but that was one of my favorite parrot i had so nice. it passed so we keep that one it's like a way of meditation where yes, you yes i at always it? look at the see as soon as they come it comes to me see yeah she's yeah. Uh, she knows me I, she recognizes yes, you yes, already yes 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 see now she stress Spino. master <laughs> <laughs> i, I uh, how often do you use it actually very often i have two then <laughs> so you see he like he's a very very up to date guy very modern um What is this all about? This is the Dao, traditional Dao. Yeah. We use it. So, so this is what you usually yeah. do. This is a sail, but we don't use sail in Dubai, but right. but usually it's a a sailboat. What are these all items about? These How I, did you get them? Yeah, uh, this is um, it's uh, one of the artist painted. So it's a replica of that. Ah, it was right. displayed in the Dubai. The world artists had come to Dubai. Uh -huh. They displayed it in all over Dubai. Come here to yes. the coins. Yes. Uh, this is your personal yes, actually collection. Yes, personal collection. Yes. Uh, how many of coins do you have here? Uh, currently, <laughs> I have here uh, 200 plus. I have another 400 mm -hmm. at home. Wow. So I actually I wanted to show people that you know when, when people walk in, I make them interesting to yeah uh, have a look at this uh, thing so they like identify which which country is that which coins in. So that it can pass away the time for them, and also it removes negativity in this office. Really? Yes, when you have copper and all these things, yeah, it removes the negative flow in the wow. the vibes. You will definitely need to use the same strategy. A good advice. All right, and now is our favorite part: the giveaway. Mr. Anup decided to give away three vouchers. Can you please show it to yeah, us? Yeah, these vouchers are uh, each vouchers is valid for two people and it's a dinner vouchers wow of, uh, in the cake you can come you can bring a, each so three of you so six people can come and uh, so actually each each voucher is for, for two, two people, people. Yeah, yeah. if you want to get this voucher what you need to do first you need to subscribe second ring the bell under this video and third in the comments below Right. What Mr. Anup needs to offer to the tourists who are coming to Dubai in order to build even better, even more successful company. Write your comments below. Don't waste your time. Please. And three I'll vouchers. I'll be very happy with that. Yeah, comments. And, and three vouchers will get directly to you whenever you are in the world. Mr. Yeah. Anup, thank you very much. Thank It was, you. It's thank really you. generous. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Your best advice to entrepreneurs? My best advice to entrepreneurs is um, to make sure that they are ready to be a business, uh, to take the risk, mm -hmm. all right? Um, that they, they know what they're getting into. Right. Uh, because uh, the business world is, 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 is an open-ended book. You know, you, it depends on where you want to go. Um, make sure that you have something Uh, valuable to offer to your customers. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you really want to 
uh, develop your business as a passion, as a, as, a, as a model. And as you grow, make sure you hire the right people. And therefore, I always equate entrepreneurial growth of the company to the hiring of the right minds to run the business. And therefore, you know, uh, the kind of talent that yeah. you want to hire and develop to run your business. Because as an entrepreneur, one of the key success factors I look at entrepreneurs as they grow is that they have developed the ability to, to, to spot talent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if they can spot talent and develop talent, I would say that that is something that entrepreneur has an edge, yeah. a competitive edge against other entrepreneurs. Three biggest events in the UAE you would recommend anyone to attend or a businessman to attend or future potential entrepreneur to attend. What are these three biggest events? Yeah, so um, I've attended a lot of events in Dubai for the last seven to ten years. But I think uh, three events which I always felt uh, that I have to go every year was uh, the, the Jitex Technology Week mm -hmm. uh, organized by Dubai World Trade Center. Uh, the annual blockchain conference, uh, stroke uh, IoT, mm -hmm. and the third one is uh, the manufacturing conference mm -hmm. that um, that uh, Dubai government with a partner usually organizes. The reason is that because um, these three conferences always uh, uh, show me the new trends and developments that businesses are learning about. So it's it's a frontier for me. Could you please give us a recommendation how we can spot a talent, uh, how we can hire a great team, uh, what we should do to make our company prosper in terms of creating a great team that will do the product? Uh, well, uh, my take is that the entrepreneur, the head of the company, mm -hmm. should develop his own skills mm -hmm. in hiring the talent or in, in actually identifying the requirements of what he needs. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. And he may consult a HR consultant or an advisor to just develop the idea further of what that talent is. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't forget when you're develop hiring a talent, you're also make, making a bet. You're also taking a risk on that talent. And as I mentioned uh, to you, there's good and bad talent. Uh, it's how that CEO or that uh, business perceives what is required for the talent. Mm -hmm. So a bad talent could be good for another company and a good talent may be bad for another company. Yeah. So the, the trick of the trade uh, in talent management or identifying talent is to hire someone who can do a better job than you as a CEO in a different field. Mm -hmm. For example, not, and not many entrepreneurs or not uh, as many entrepreneurs are good at financial management or investment management. You know, They may be good at making decisions about the market, mm -hmm. but they may not be so fast savvy in the financial side of things. So you need to hire someone who is good in financial management and investment. Yeah. Uh, the trick of the trade is uh, in talent management, you may, once you hire them, you give them the tools, you give them the incentive, and you uh, give them the space to develop uh, his or her uh, role in that, uh, mm -hmm. in that company. Uh, secondly, uh, talent is not just about spotting talent. You need to create the talent system in your company, mm -hmm. the rewards, the values, and you need to create a talent system that is meritocratic based. Means, uh, whoever does the best performance yeah. should be rewarded. Mm -hmm. And again, there are two types of talent. There's a professional talent, what I call the expert talent, mm -hmm. versus the leadership talent. Mm -hmm. So, in your company, you must spot different types of talent. Right. A person may be, have leadership qualities, but may not be so good at management, but he's good at bringing new business for the company. So you should give him a certain career or development path. A person may be very good at financial management, so good that you cannot do without him or her. And you must give him a different uh, professional path, mm -hmm. but they may not be good at leadership. Mm -hmm. So in a CEO's role is actually very challenging. You need to find the ability or capacity to develop different types of talent. All right, from the lowest level to the most senior level. Mm -hmm. So so talent is a is something that I'm very passionate about because 
I always tell uh, the, the CEO, don't hire talent equally at that one level. You're going to fail because you need to have talents of varying degrees. Some can lead, some can, uh, can develop uh, their uh, project skills, some can develop markets, some can manage people. Mm-hmm. Your role as a CEO is to be, a, to be the conductor of an orchestra, bringing out the best, yeah. combining the best to create the most successful business outcome for your company. Mm-hmm. Okay guys, so let's try to do something like that. If you write a comment under this video saying what is your idea about doing business, write it under the video. Uh, we will look with Alexander at the results and the one who will be the most interesting will have a one hour consulting session with Alexander. Get the number one step-by-step guide on how to become your own boss in the UAE. You will learn how to start your own business in the UAE. Just click the link in the description below this video and follow this link. This is your time to start. Click the link below this video. Bam. Which is the best city in the UAE? Dubai, of course. Dubai, for sure. <laughs> Dubai. What was the happiest moment in your life? Uh, I think happiness is uh, having, first of all, a support system from a family and a very happy family around you. Um, I think for me, unhappiness is when, when you're seeing struggle in life, when you're seeing people around you who are not happy. And uh, I think that, for me, is, is something that I'm not doing right. My first album. Right. Yeah. Your first girl. The happiest moment in my life was when I was given a management position in the company. Uh, for the first time, uh, the CEO trusted me to manage a team. Mm-hmm. And that was a wonderful experience. It was scary, but it was the most uh, a wonderful experience because that set the tone for my career for the next 20 years. Who is the biggest businessman in the history of planet? There's too many. I mean, if, but uh, I don't have one businessman. It's uh, for me, it'd be Richard Branson and Elon Musk. Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Yeah, Microsoft chairman. Yeah. In my mind, um, yeah. he may be a cliche, but I think Bill Gates is, to me, the the most uh, inspiring businessman mm-hmm. because uh, post his business, he has set up the whole philanthropy movement of giving back to society. Yeah. And that, to me, is the most uh, noble thing a businessman can do. What is success for you? For, you? Uh, for example, um, I did a group. Yeah. And the guest is happy, I'm happy. Right. And they write to me that they, they are, had a fabulous time. I'm the happiest person. Success to me is when I'm able to give back to society, to give back to my colleagues, my wisdom, my advice. Uh, my mentorship and my coaching. So uh, I'm in a position to do that. Mm -hmm. And that is the most uh, successful uh, quality that I feel is important. Success for me is enjoying the journey of wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I think if you're not waking up in the morning and looking forward to the day, uh, you're not successful. And it's not about money, it's about just waking up and looking forward to what you're doing. When you meet with God, what would you tell him? I would tell God, thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to help others, to grow and help others, mm-hmm. and to leave this world with nothing but happy memories and experiences. What I will tell him, I need good health, because health brings everything. And some little more less tension in the office. <laughs> I would tell him thank you. <laughs> that was Manish, the founder and the CEO of Hero Industries. One of the top businessmen in Dubai, in the UAE, the founder of Tour Dubai. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's Alexander Williams, one of the most influential visionaries of the UAE. Thank you for coming. 
and for joining us. You're most welcome. Thank you. We are very happy yeah. that you shared your story, shared your experience. We got inspired and we are ready to go. So game changer, stay tuned and do the business. Get the number one step-by-step -step guide on how to become your own boss in the UAE. You will learn how to start your own business in the UAE. Just click the link in the description below this video and follow this link. This is your time to start. Click the link below this video. Bam.